I found the five best dividend stocks for 2019 and they're not technically dividend stocks. I'm going to reveal these five stock picks along with two types of investments that everyone needs in their portfolio. In fact, I have a retirement fund that's almost exclusively invested in one of these and earns double digit returns every single year. We're talking dividend investing today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Ho with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your time to be here today. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I love dividend stocks and we've had a few really popular dividend investing videos here on the channel, but there are two huge cash flow investments that people sometimes overlook. These two investments trade like dividend stocks, but are a special type of company. Now we're talking about master limited partnerships or MLPs and real estate investment trusts or REITs. Not only are these two of the best cash flow investments you can make, but it's a great way to protect your money from ordinary stocks. In this video, I'll explain why these two types of stocks aren't dividend stocks. I'll reveal the danger in treating them like other stocks and why they should be part of everyone's portfolio. I'll then share the five best investments in MLPs and REITs you can make this year. Now there are two very important differences between these two types of stocks and other dividend stocks that you must know about. First is that they're passed through companies, which means they pass profits through to investors and taxes are treated differently. These companies and their investors get special tax breaks because of the way they handle cash flow and profits. Second, and this is the one that most investors miss, is that these companies can't be valued like other dividend stocks. These companies own assets like real estate and pipelines that mean huge amounts of depreciation on the income statement. They take that depreciation off their earnings to lower taxes, but it also means that earnings are a terrible view of the profitability of that business. So if you ever hear anyone talking about the price to earnings ratio of an MLP or a REIT, they don't know what they're talking about. You can't use the PE ratio with these stocks. There's a special way to value each of these types of stocks and I'll show you how to do that for each. But on to these special types of dividends though. First, let's look at the master limited partnership. Now MLPs are a company set up to own energy assets, usually oil and natural gas pipelines and storage facilities. Now MLPs get a fee from energy companies for letting them use those pipelines and storage. This is one of the benefits to MLP investing is that those profits don't necessarily depend on the price of oil. The stock price is going to bounce around a little if the price of oil jumps or crashes, but the company is still collecting those fees on the volume of the oil pumped through those pipelines. Now compared to an oil company where sales are directly affected by the price of oil, MLPs are a little safer here because of those fees. Since MLPs pass their income and expenses on to investors through special reporting, the company doesn't pay taxes. That's a very efficient way to hold these assets and it's why many oil companies have sold their pipelines into an MLP company. Now with MLPs, you don't get that double tax problem you get with regular companies where the company pays taxes on profits first, then investors have to pay taxes again on their returns. Another benefit to MLPs is that the cash return you receive isn't all taxed in the same year either. Some of those dividends count to lower your cost in the shares, so you don't pay taxes on them until you sell the stock. And if you pass these through to your heirs in an estate, taxes are never paid on that portion of the returns. Because they pass almost all the income onto investors, MLPs have some of the highest cash returns of any types of stocks. The dividend on the Illyrian MLP ETF, a fund that holds shares of MLPs, pays an 8.4% annual dividend yield. There is one downside to MLPs I want to point out before getting to how to value these stocks and my two favorite MLP picks. MLP investors get a K-1 form, a special tax form each year from the company that details the returns. Now this means a little more work at tax time to report that investment, but any online tax software makes it easy to file taxes on these. Now on to how to value an MLP. Now remember, you can't use that price to earnings ratio here. These companies have a huge amount of depreciation that makes earnings misleading, but it doesn't affect that actual cash flow. So what we're going to do is use what's called the price to distributable cash flow or price to DCF. Finding this value for distributable cash flow, the amount of money the company has available to return to investors is important because it gives us an idea of that sustainability of the dividend. A company can't pay out more than is available forever, so it's a good metric to make sure that dividend isn't going to be cut anytime soon. I'll show you how to calculate the DCF yourself, but all MLPs are going to calculate it on their reporting. I do it myself only because I like to double check the numbers coming out of the company and make sure I'm comparing stocks with the same calculation. So here's the table, and again, don't get freaked out because this is always going to be provided to you in the company's reporting. 
To find out how much money the company has available to distribute, you take the cash flow from operations. This is all going to be found on that statement of cash flows. And you remove any spending on capital and income from non-controlling interests. That gives you sustainable DCF, which is what the company can return to investors and still keep operations running smoothly. Now, while sustainable DCF is a better measure, a lot of people use this DCF as reported because it's sometimes the only number reported. To get to DCF, you also add back that income from non-controlling interests as well as a working capital reported. Now, the big one here is adding back this proceeds from asset sales. This is technically proceeds the company can return to investors, but you know, a company can't forever be selling its assets and still keep that business running. So that's why we use that sustainable DCF if, if it's available. With this number, you can find that valuation with the price to DCF, or you can find out how much the company is returning to investors for what's called the distribution coverage ratio. Now this is how much the DCF the company earns versus how much it pays out. Now that last measure is important because an MLP that pays out more than its distributable cash flow can't do so forever. You see here the coverage ratio for a group of MLPs and that the average is around a DCF that's about 1.2 times the distribution. This means the company has cash flow about 20% higher than what it's returning. But you also see that some of these companies here save more or less. Now on to my two favorite MLP picks for 2019. DCP Midstream, ticker DCP, is an integrated MLP, which means it owns energy assets throughout that supply chain. That's from pipelines to processing plants and storage. This gives it better pricing power and more control negotiating with energy companies. Now, DCP hedges most of its exposure to natural gas prices, and 80% of its revenue is that fee-based, so it's not going to be as volatile as even other MLPs. The company pays an 8.6% dividend and has a 1.4 times distribution coverage, which means that dividend is extremely safe. Pipeline volumes increased 35% in the third quarter versus the last year cash flow. So that cash flow is on a good trend and shares trade for about eight times DCF. Our next MLP pick here is Energy Transfer Partners or ticker symbol ET. Now ET is a little more diverse than DCP, both geographically and by assets. The company owns natural gas pipelines through several regions, as well as some oil pipelines and export facilities. Now, Energy Transfer has one of the best project backlog profiles I've seen in MLPs, meaning that it has lots of projects lined up for growth. Cash flow jumped 40% year over year in the second quarter, so this is a company growing fast. That 8.2% dividend yield is covered by about 1.2 times DCF and shares trade for about 8.8 .8 times DCF. One last note about MLPs here is that you shouldn't own them in a retirement or a tax advantaged account. The profits here are already tax advantaged, so you lose that benefit if you hold these assets in, a, in an IRA or a Roth IRA. Our next dividend stock investment here is a real estate investment trust or REITs, and these are my favorite of the two. Those of you in the community know I'm a big believer in real estate, and I love REITs because they give everyone the opportunity to get into property investing, but without that big down payment needed. We've got another video here on the channel detailing the seven property strategies I used after getting out of the Marine Corps to get started real estate investing with no money down. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below, but the fact is that direct property investing can still be a lot of time and work. So REITs are special companies set up to manage commercial real estate and, and then pay out that cash flow to investors. REITs can specialize in a property type, so apartments, office, retail, warehouse, and self-storage, or they can hold a mix of properties. Now, most REITs hold properties across the country, so it's a great way to diversify your portfolio of individual properties, getting exposure to other regions and property types. REITs pay no corporate taxes as long as they pay out at least 90% of income to investors. So like those MLPs, this makes for a great way to manage property, avoid that double taxation, and that means huge cash dividends for investors. Now, in contrast to MLPs, REITs can be held in a retirement account, and that's how I invest in them. The dividends from a REIT are either taxed as income or at that capital gains tax rate, so you'd owe taxes on these if you hold them in a regular account. Holding them in a retirement account means you don't pay taxes for decades on all that cash flow. Now, this is a great strategy for any high yield investments like dividend stocks, REITs, or bonds. Hold these in a retirement account so you pay no taxes on those returns. Your other stocks where your, most of your return is going to be through those capital gains when you sell them, those you can hold in a regular investing account. Now, there are primarily two types of REITs, an equity REIT, which actually owns the properties, and then a mortgage REIT, which invests in real estate loans. Now, these mortgage REITs pay higher dividends, but they tend to be more volatile, especially around when interest rates are rising. I've invested in these mortgage REITs, but prefer equity REITs as a better long-term investment. 
Just like with MLPs, you can't rely on that reported earnings for a REIT because of that high amount of depreciation they get from that real estate. Instead, we use a measure called Funds from Operations, or FFO. Now, FFO is very similar to that DCF measure we saw with MLPs. You take that reported net income from the REIT and add back depreciation, but minus out any gains they made on property sales. Now, those property sales are a source of income, but not something the REIT can do forever and expect to stay in business. Investors also look at this adjusted funds from operation, this AFFO, which takes out capital expenditures. Now, CapEx here is the money the company spends to keep its properties in good shape, so that maintenance spending. Remember, the idea here is to find out how much cash the company has available to distribute without cutting into the money it needs to run the business. Again, like that DCF calculation for MLPs, you don't necessarily have to do this yourself because it's always reported by the company. It's just a good idea to understand the concept and be able to double check the company's reporting. You use FFO just like that other metric, so you can take the price of the REIT over that FFO to compare the valuation to other REITs. You can also get a coverage ratio of FFO over the dividend to see how safe that yield is for the stock. Now I'm going to share the three REITs that I own and love for strong dividend yields and price appreciation. Dividend yields are a little lower for these REITs compared to the MLPs, but you tend to have higher price appreciation in the shares. This is because those real estate properties appreciate and REITs tend to hold a little more back for growth compared to those MLPs. First here is Extra Space Storage, ticker EXR, which owns over 1,600 storage facilities across the country. This is a great property type because it's very easy to manage, so costs are extremely low and that means lots of cash flow. Let's face it, we Americans love to buy lots of stuff that we don't have room to store. That means rented storage space. Occupancy at EXR is at 93%, almost completely full, and the percent of the population using self-storage has risen to 8%, doubling over the last 20 years. Shares have produced a 715% total return over the last decade. That's the highest among storage REITs and the second highest among all equity REITs. The dividend has grown 115% over the last five years and pays a 3.6% yield. Now our next REIT is Ventus, or ticker VTR, a leader in medical and senior living properties. Now the company is well diversified with about 55% of net operating income from those senior living facilities, nearly a fifth from medical office space and another 7% from university-based research centers, then the rest is a mix of those health centers and loans. Now I love the healthcare REIT space because of that broad demographic trend and the stability in healthcare spending. The senior living space has been a little weak lately on oversupply, but it's turning around and that boomer generation is just now aging into the segment. Shares pay a 5.2% dividend yield and have produced an annual 13.5% return over the last two decades. The shares trade for about 15 times FFO on a really strong outlook for growth. Now our last REIT pick isn't a REIT itself, but a fund that holds REITs, the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, or ticker VNQ. This fund holds shares of 184 REITs across all property types. The VNQ is the best way to get that instant diversification for your real estate portfolio because it holds pretty much everything and that expense fee on the fund is one of the lowest you'll find. Shares pay a 4.4% dividend yield and have produced a total return of 11.3% annually over the last decade. Do not neglect these two types of dividend stocks for your portfolio. Not only do they pay dividend yields of three and four times the rest of the market, but they're going to give you exposure to assets that are going to smooth out that risk of a stock market crash. Remember to value these stocks differently with that DCF or FFO calculation and check out some of those five great dividend picks I highlighted. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, just subscribe to the channel and ask it in the comments. We'll make sure you get an answer in the next video.